Welcome to the No Guilt Fangirls Podcast, where liking what you like is never a bad thing. Here's your host and head fangirl in charge, Patty Holiday. Hey, y'all. Welcome to the No Guilt Fangirls Podcast. I'm your host, Patty Holiday. And today we've got muggles and wizards hanging out together because uh, we're talking about all things Wizarding World of Harry Potter. The books, the movies, the theme park. Oh my word, have you seen the opening of Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure is today. It's June 13th. It's happening today. I'm so excited about that. Uh, It looks amazing. And I can't wait to experience it next time I'm at Universal Orlando Resort. And I think my guest today is probably feeling the same way, but she might have to wait a little bit longer (laughs) than me. That's true. Just a little bit. (laughs) Just a little bit, not too much longer. Uh, Today, my guest is Sarah Gillian. She is an awesome girl mom to twins, but she's got a little wizard on the way. Yes, we do. (laughs) (laughs) She blogs at sarahinthesuburbs.com, and she's also the owner of the Facebook group, The Wizarding World Moms. Hey, Sarah. Hello, Patty. Thanks for having me on today. I'm super excited to talk about all things Wizarding World. (laughs) Oh, we're going to get some mischief managed going on over here, so... (laughs) Tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, Let the people know where they can find you online. Well, like you said, I blog at sarahinthesuburbs.com. I'm Sarah in the Suburbs on most social media. I am Sarah Gilliland on Twitter just because, you know, that whole like time where people were really trying to get themselves verified. I was like, oh, well, I'll just change it to my name. And then I was like, you know what? It really doesn't matter. I'm not a celebrity. I don't need to be verified, but I just left it because I was tired of messing with it. So Sarah Gilliland, which is my (laughs) name, or Sarah in the Suburbs, either way. Um, And yes, uh, I'm glad you mentioned that I started the Wizarding World Um, Moms Facebook group. And I started it because you have a really awesome nerd cool group called Marvel Moms. I do. And I was really (laughs) inspired by your group and the uh, activity that goes on in there, the discussions we all have and how we can support each other. But I have invited other people and told people like, you don't have to be a mom to join it. You don't even have to be a woman to join it. I just wanted a community for people who love the Wizarding World. And I started it after (laughs) Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald, because it was really a divisive movie in the Wizarding World fandom. People were really divided on whether or not it was a good movie. They thought it kind of jumped the shark. They didn't really like the storyline. And I loved it. And I thought people were being way too harsh. So I was like, I'm going to start a space for people to discuss and to be polite and and discuss about it because I know there's been there are other fan sites that have been around for a long time because the books you know came out I guess late 90s early 2000s so it's been around a while those sites are so big now and they have so many fans and so many people commenting there's a lot of you know there's a lot of things and as I'm sure you know as a moderator of many groups <laughs> there's a lot of things that can be missed and there's a lot of um unkind words that can be said and things like that and so I just wanted it to be a safe space but so you people can find me there but um I'm not just a Harry Potter fan I'm in your Marvel group because I do love Marvel yes girl. and I'm in the Star <laughs> Wars Moms group on Facebook because I'm a huge Star Wars fan. So covering it all. <laughs> Is everybody sensing the trend here? We have the Marvel Moms, the Star Wars Moms, the Harry Potter Moms. Guys, come join yes. us. And like I think I think every single of one of those moms group, like it's we just went with moms because we are moms, but everyone's invited. <laughs> Moms have a pretty good track record of being good influencers, whether you actually are that in your job title or not. You know, we're always looking to each other to find out exactly. information or tips or, you know, just advice, just a friendly conversation. And we all feel pretty safe with one another. So I feel like that's that's probably why we all just started with the word moms. Because like you said, we are all moms. So <laughs> it, yeah, it just, it worked. It works mm-hmm. well. And uh, it, they're all great communities. They, they're And it's so much fun because as things were getting up to speed for Captain Marvel coming out and for Endgame to come out, my group was kind of going crazy. Last uh, fall, your group went a little bit crazy mm-hmm. with uh, Crimes of Grindelwald. And then now with Galaxy's Edge coming at Disney World, the Star Wars moms, everybody's getting a little crazy over there. So it's kind of fun and also super cool that <laughs> these different IPs out there are dropping stuff at different times. So we always have something yes. year-round exactly. to fangirl exactly. over. 
so yeah, no, the Facebook groups are great. And I recommend all three of those. Highly, highly recommend five stars right there. <laughs> um, <laughs> but today we are going to specifically talk about Harry Potter. And our love for this fandom. Now, tell me, Sarah, how did you, how did you first get into Harry Potter? Were you a book reader? Was it the movies? Like, do you remember what started your interest at first? Oh my gosh, I have to go way, way back because Harry Potter has been around forever, uh, at least in book form. That was how he, you know, obviously got started. If you're new to the fandom, Harry Potter is not just movies and theme parks; it's a book series. And yes, and I think a, a lot of people that are new to the fandom like that kind of forget that because Star Wars, I think, started out as I think it just started out as a movie, and then now books have been written and comics and things like that. And then Marvel obviously got its start way back in the mm-hmm. day as comics before it became movies. So it's always interesting to remember how different fandoms got their start. So I'm, I was trying to think, and I still I do not remember my very first interaction with it other than I know it had to have been a book because I picked up Harry Potter and the mm-hmm. Sorcerer's Stone. I think a friend gave it to me. A friend read it and was like, you have got to read this. And I was like, I didn't, I didn't like the illustration on the cover. Um, and I was like, who is this JK Rowling person? I've never heard of them before. And they're like, no, no, you need to read this. And I was like, okay, fine. So then I read it and I think I read it in two days. That's how quickly it grabbed me and pulled me in. And then I was obsessed. And then I became that person that went at midnight and bought it from books a million and dressed up and did trivia contests. And when I found out they were going to to build a physical wizarding world that you could go visit. <laughs> you know, it just all oh, dreams came true. <laughs> so definitely the books. Uh, yeah, I, it's kind of similar here. My little sister is and was, but uh, she's always been this huge, huge book reader. And she's definitely younger than me, but by a lot. Um, but she's, I think, even younger than you. I'm trying to do the math. <laughs> I can't remember. But I, I think she's, anyway, and she was of the age where she was like in middle school, I think, when mm-hmm. these books came out. And she became obsessed mm-hmm. with them. And she absolutely did the, she drug my poor mom out at midnight mm-hmm. to go pick up her copy at Borders Bookstore. Borders. Uh, and she, <laughs> I know, throwing it back. And uh, she was completely obsessed with it. Well, because she was so excited about it and couldn't stop talking about it, I went ahead and picked up probably her copy because, you know, hanging out at mom's house during the summer or whatever it was and picked up her copy and, and started reading and then quickly said, okay, when's the next one? So right, because she, she was just like you and just like me, she would read it within a day, maybe mm-hmm. two. Mm-hmm. So I knew I didn't have to spend the cash on buying the books. Mm-hmm. My little sister would be done with it in a heartbeat. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Sometimes I had sometimes I had to fight my mom over it, oh. which is also kind of funny because here we go. We're talking somebody who was like 12 years old at the time, mm-hmm. somebody who was in her 20s, and then somebody who was in her maybe early 50s, 40s or 50s, and we were all Harry Potter book obsessed mm-hmm. when they started I coming out. I mean, what isn't that the best fangirling ever? I love Yes, it's so, it's multi-generational and it continues to be that way. I'm in the middle of reading, we're on book four, me and my girls. Um, I am reading it to them. Oh, I love just it. Because I love that. It's, yeah, it's, it's a sweet time for me because I'm having a lot of fun going back and remembering specifics about the story. Because like I said, you know, I started reading, I think, your sister and me may be about the same age because I feel like I was in eighth grade, like almost going into high school when I first started reading it. And I remember my sophomore year in college was the last year that um, the Deathly Hallows came out. So that was the last, sorry, the last year of the books. I mean, not the movie. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, I remember going at midnight with some friends to, I think we were at a Barnes and Noble at that point. And I was like, <laughs> we get there and it, we were in a college town and there were other college students there, but there were a lot of like middle school and high schoolers with their parents. And I was like, oh no, are we too old for this? <laughs> but we can't be <laughs> never. Because, no, but and we were like, this is the last book. Like we have to know what happens and all that kind of stuff. So, but I, so I, it's been a while since I've read them, um, watched the movies plenty of times and, you know, been to the Wizarding World in Orlando. So, 
but it's been fun to like read them with my girls and pass that on. And one of my twins is they, they both love it, but one of them is especially obsessed. Like she just loves, she wants to meet Daniel Radcliffe so bad. She's obsessed with Hermione Granger. Well, let's be honest. Who doesn't? (laughs) Who doesn't? I mean, (laughs) she's, you know, she's little. And so she thinks that like, she, the first time we went to the Wizarding World this past November, she thought he was going to be there. Oh, that's adorable. <laughs> so, well, yeah, it was really good. I was like, no, honey, uh, he's British, and I'm sure he lives somewhere in England. I'm not <laughs> sure. And, you know, but he's also an actor, so he may be somewhere else at this point. And she was like, I just really want to meet him. That's and so I was cute. like, I know, babe. Me too. Me too. <laughs> well, what what was the first movie that you remember watching? Uh, and, and obviously, you had read the book. So when we found mm-hmm. out that there were movies coming, we were those people – yet again, like probably at the mm-hmm. midnight showing when it opened and crashing yep. the box office because of our yep. way too old for this. However, we're here anyway, <laughs> Harry Potter yeah. fandom. Uh, what did you, did you go see it in the theaters? Like I did. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We were lucky. I was lucky enough to the first few movies. I was still, I guess it was toward the end of my college year and I wasn't married yet. Even if I was like, Neil went to the midnight showing of Deathly Hallows with me, but like we, uh, I, I, you know, I didn't have any kids. I didn't have any other commitments as an adult yet. So I definitely went to the midnight showing. I'm pretty sure of all of them. I think there may have been one or two where I ended up having to go like at some point during opening weekend, maybe I had work. I don't remember, but I definitely saw every single movie in the theater. And I'm pretty sure I saw Deathly Hallows part one and part two twice. Yeah. Just because it was That's so a, good, and it was just you know it's the culmination there was of a, all of it. <laughs> yeah, and there was a there was a lot there to take. Mm-hmm. I uh, I actually I want to I know when I know when it was. It was the the second movie, The Chamber of Secrets. I had just had my first baby, mm. and yes, y'all, I was that person that took a baby to the movie <laughs> because he was a really good napper. He was a day it, he was awful sleeper at night, but he would nap like you wouldn't believe during the day. And so I took him, I remember taking him to Chamber of Secrets and just literally holding the stroller because we, we sat down out fr- up mm-hmm. front even so that we weren't even, and I was like pushing the stroller going, please just stay asleep. Please just don't sit. Mm-hmm. You know, I just don't need you to wake up during the snake yeah. scene. You know, let me just get through this movie. And um, it worked out okay. Yeah. Jake did me there a solid. He slept the entire night away. Uh, uh, by the way, young parents, I do not recommend this plan of action. <laughs> I recommend what we actually ended up doing uh, from movies from that point forward. And we still to do do it to this day at times. Uh, mm-hmm. Do it in shifts. Uh, mom goes to one movie and then and watches the kids. And then you literally, my husband and I have like high fived in the in the parking mm-hmm. lot <laughs> with mm-hmm. the kids in the car. And he's gone in and I've gone and taken them home and put them to bed because we never want to miss our favorite movies on opening nights. But taking the little mm-hmm. kids, it's just such yep. a hit and miss. And so we we definitely learned our lesson but but i will say i i took my i took my baby in there to that to that one because i i was that obsessed and i just needed to see this you know at the earliest mm-hmm. possible moments now you've already kind of touched on this but what do you think about the fantastic beast series I, I don't know if you've read any of like the extra books or the extra information that's out there or if you're just watching the movies and i think they're going to be a total of six of the Fantastic Beasts so. yeah, series right. movies mm-hmm. coming out. So we've still got a long, we still have a long way to go uh, with this series. And it just hasn't quite uh, gotten mm-hmm. up and running like the original Harry Potters did. So what, what do you like about it? What don't you like about it? Feel free to discuss. Well, I love it. I have read, like I said, I was obsessed. And before the movies, before they made the books into movies, any book that J.K. Rowling released, I was getting my hands on it. I was getting my hands on um, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, A History of Magic. I got my hands on, um, I believe it was Quidditch Through the Ages. I read Uh all all of that stuff. And then when when they started the Pottermore website, um, which I don't think it was called Pottermore at the beginning. It was called something else. Anyway, I just, I, any, any scrap of information out there that I could possibly get my hands on, I was getting my hands on it. Um, that's just how obsessed I am with this fandom. And um, I really, the first Fantastic Beast movie really set the bar high. I loved it. I loved, for, 
course, I need to back up and say I love the 1920s anyway. That is one of my favorite time periods oh, in I all know. of human history. Everybody was just so fabulous. <laughs> the costuming was great. I loved seeing, I, and I really, I guess what I love most about this portion of the story that J.K. Rowling is telling is that this is the before Harry Potter. Like Harry Potter is awesome, but like, I want to know what's, I, you know, like we did with the cursed child. I want to know what happened at the end of Deathly Hallows. I mean, we found out mm-hmm. that, sorry, spoiler alert for everybody that doesn't know this yet, but you know, Ron and um, Hermione got together and then Harry and Jenny got together and they had kids and they were sending them off to Hogwarts. But then that's where the story stopped for a while. And I wanted to know what was going to happen after. And then when she started telling the story about this guy that we had all been hearing about for many years in the books and the movies and stuff, just by name, Newt's commander, this guy with all these animals and, and creatures and stuff like what I want to know more about him. And also, I don't know if we were going to get to this at some point in the podcast, but I'm a Hufflepuff just like you. So I love that Newt's commander is a Hufflepuff because sometimes <laughs> they get a bad rap. You know, everybody's like, Oh, Gryffindor, Harry Potter, <laughs> you know, yeah, we need to we yeah. we need to talk about that because Hufflepuffs, some of my yes. favorite people are Hufflepuffs. And it's so funny because when I took that test, at first I was like, Hufflepuff? How about a Hufflepuff? Uh-huh. I know Hufflepuff. And then when you read what a Hufflepuff is, I'm like, oh my gosh, I am totally a Hufflepuff. 1000 percent right. I was the same. I had a really bad reaction to I was like, oh, this is like the wimpiest. <laughs> Uh, house in Hogwarts. And then the more I read about it and the more I learned about all the different yep. characters that were yep. Hufflepuffs, I was like, oh, wait, no, this is probably like one of the, I mean, this it's, is it's, a, it, it's a There's perfect no fit. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I, I yeah, I, this was a good fit for me. I, I could have been a Gryffindor, but I'm definitely, I feel, I feel comfortable calling myself Hufflepuff and yeah. proud Hufflepuff. And, uh, but I think I have Ravenclaw undertones, but I'm definitely, <laughs> I'm, way, I'm like 95% Hufflepuff, maybe 5% Ravenclaw. <laughs> Look, my best friend is a Slytherin and she's a hardcore Slytherin. Uh-huh. And so I figure she's got my back. She can balance me out if there's anything that I you need know. help with. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, sometimes you need the Slytherins in your life to like, when you're being too nice about something, your Slytherin friends will be like, hey. Stand up for yourself. <laughs> Literally. No, that's exactly yeah. what she does. She's like, whoa, no, that's not the way this is. And I'm like, okay, I just thought maybe she's like, nope, stop. <laughs> so it's, it's good to have a Slytherin. To fi- when I meet someone, and first of all, I'm always, I'm like, are you a, do you, are you a fan of Disney, Star Wars, Marvel, Harry Potter, whatever? And if they say Harry Potter, I'm like, okay, what house are you? Because that immediately right. tells me what kind of person I'm dealing with. <laughs> And I'm like, that's probably a bad way to judge people, but it really helps me because I'm like, okay, if you're a Slytherin, I know this about, you know, I know what that means. If you're a Gryffindor, I know what that means, you know, all that kind of stuff. It just helps me kind of like, you know, and then sometimes I'll say something to people and I'll be like, oh, I'm a Hufflepuff. And they're like, wait, what does that mean? I was like, you haven't been sorted yet. We need to get you on Pottermore and sort you. (laughs) I know. Let me, let me have your phone. We are going to fix this. So yeah, no, I I I love the fact that Newt was a Hufflepuff. And when I saw, I think it was uh the promos mm-hmm. that were they were putting out for the crimes of Grindelwald, and they had him do something with Pat, I don't know what he he was wearing or he was doing something with, with the Hufflepuffness. Yeah. I had my little heart just soared. And I was like, oh, that's so, that's so yeah. cute. So I was excited too. Say you do have somebody who's never Harry Pottered before, but um what I have found is that you have people that really mm-hmm didn't read the books um, because they they thought they mm-hmm. were for kids. Like around my age, you know, they thought they were for kids. So they never got into the books. And then the movies, I think are fantastic, but I also think it's because I had the background of the book. And so it helped me immediately, like, okay, full disclosure, my husband, who I adore and love to death, has not and he and he reads everything. He is a super duper duper reader. He has not read any of the Harry Potter books. <laughs> and I'm like, what is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? He, but when we watch the movies, he's also not obsessed with the movies like I am. And I kind of feel like if he read the books, there mm-hmm. would be so many more undertones and details in the movies that he would then mm-hmm. become obsessed with me and he'd totally get it. All that being said, when we went to Wizarding World of uh, Harry Potter in Universal Orlando for the first time, mm-hmm. he his eyes just lit up. And he was walking around looking at everything and asking me all the questions. And, you know, he wanted to know details about every single thing 
that he was catching, he was like, what is this? I bet this is something, this is something big, isn't it? I'm like, yes, yes, it is. Good eye, you know, but he didn't have any clue because he had no context because he's barely seen any of the movies and then he doesn't read the book. Were you kind of like, if you'd read the book, you'd know. (laughs) Um, Of course I was, girl. I may be a Hufflepuff, but that doesn't mean that I'm going to sit back and go, uh, yeah, no, I I threw some shade at him. I was like, well, you know, those books that I've been telling you to read for 25 years. Yeah, those. Yeah. (laughs) Anywho, um, <laughs> um, so I have found that there are a lot of people that go to Universal for the first time are super blown away by this immersive experience. And, mm-hmm. you know, we're mentioning Universal Orlando, but there's also at Universal uh, Studios Hollywood, they mm-hmm. also have a Hogwarts Hogsmeade section there. So East Coast, West Coast, either way, guys, go get your fix at Universal. Uh, totally, completely worth your coins mm-hmm. uh, to go spend them there because it's amazing. Even if you are not a huge uh, fan fangirl or fanboy, you will become one shortly. Okay. Yes. What advice would you give to someone who wants to go from zero to Harry Potter, right? Somebody who wants to get into the Harry Potter fandom and they really don't know anything about it except for maybe, yeah. I don't know, they're watching social media today and they're seeing – all of this Hagrid's coaster stuff happening and they're interested and they want to notice the story behind that. And they come to you because you're a Harry Potter expert. What, how, where would you steer them? Where would you tell them to start with? Well, my gut reaction is to always tell people to start with the books, but mm-hmm. I realize, um, people out there are not as avid of readers as I am, as you are. Um, My husband has read the books, but it's been a while. He hasn't reread them, but he's still a fan. And I think it started with him because of the book. So I always would suggest that to people. If they are just like, I'm not a reader, I'm not going to read, then I'm going to say, you need to at least start with the movies. I think the movies, at least the first... Hmm. This is the whole. This could be an entire other podcast about what I have problems with during some of the movies. Because Prisoner of Azkaban is one of my favorite <laughs> books in the series, and I really hate that movie <laughs> because they left a lot of stuff out. Really? Yes, they left a lot of stuff out, and then they like flip flop the order of some of the events in it. And I just really like so that movie made me mad. But <laughs> for all intents and purposes, <laughs> for someone who is brand new and is starting over from the beginning, the first probably four are the really good adaptations of the books, you know, give or take what my opinions are about number three. Um, And they, especially the first two, gosh, Chamber of Secrets and um, Sorcerer's Stone are some of the best book to movie adaptations I've ever seen. So if you want a crash course in Harry Potter and you just want to know a little bit about it before you go on your trip, probably just watch the first two, maybe the first three, if you can squeeze it in. If you can watch all eight, because yes, the last movie got divided up into two. If you can watch all eight movies before you go, even better, because there are definitely things, if you're going to go to um, Universal Hollywood or Orlando, there are definitely things in the land that you won't get if you haven't read the books or watched the movies. And there were certain things like we're, like I said, we were only on when we went in November last year, we were only on book three with my girls and we weren't quite finished with it yet. So there were a few things in the land that like, as we were passing by, I kind of had to like shield their faces so they didn't see it because they were like, some of the stuff they would point to and go, what's that about? And I'm like, oh, we haven't read about that yet. Don't look. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Just because for them, they do want to be immersed in the land and they don't want to be spoiled by stuff. If you're somebody who doesn't really care about spoilers and you just want to like know the names of the characters and you want to know that this area is Diagon Alley and this area is Hogsmeade, just read the first couple of books or watch the first couple of movies and you'll get the basics of it. Um, But if you don't want to be spoiled by something, you definitely need to see all eight of the movies or all seven of the books. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree with you. Uh, I think you can definitely get an understanding and get a, get, get a a, a taste of it Mm -hmm. by one or two. Uh, Mm -hmm. but to, to really nerd out, you Mm -hmm. need to go ahead and invest your time and go ahead and watch the movies. Well, and that's why I say get, start with the books, because I feel like if I can get people past the first couple of chapters and get them hooked, like you won't stop. You'll be like, oh my gosh, why didn't I read this 10 years ago? And you'll read all seven books before you go. Like it'll just, no, it's true. It's true. And then here is my, here's my secret. Uh, here's my dirty little Harry Potter secret. (laughs) Um, I did read the books back when I was much younger and did not have children Mm -hmm. and was able to concentrate. That was way back in the day. Mm -hmm. Now, 
the biggest investment I ever made, which has paid off, I can't even tell you how many times, was in the Audible Harry Potter downloads. Mm, yes. I downloaded the Harry Potter audiobooks. Uh, you can get them. I actually use the... Um, there's a library app that's out now. It's called Libby mm-hmm. uh, and uh, it's free. Oh. So you can go in and if your library offers the books, you can you know borrow them for a period of time and whatever. But for me, it was worth it. I have it on Audible and I every now and then I'm just like, it's time to start Harry Potter again. And I will start from the book one and I listen to it whenever I am driving in the car. And what I love about that is that it's completely family mm-hmm. friendly in that my children have all seen the movie. So we're not also spoiling anything, but it's something that I can play on the speakers in the car and they can enjoy it. They can listen to it and I don't have to mm-hmm. feel censored. Um, secondly, as a fangirl at heart, I am doing my best to indoctrinate <laughs> my children in all things I love. There you and go. that includes the Harry Potter. Um, the funny thing is my daughter she pretends that she hates uh-huh. Harry Potter, my oldest daughter. She doesn't. She, do- she there, There's no way. She doesn't. But she pretends that she does. And so every time- She's in that phase of life where she's too cool for everything. Pretty much. Pretty <laughs> much. So every time I turn it on, she's like, ugh. You know, but um, but really that that is a great way that if you're going on a long road trip or any road trip, even if you're not going mm-hmm. down to Orlando or to um, Hollywood to, to go to Universal- It doesn't matter where you're going. These are great road trip listens because the storytelling is great. Uh, They're pretty true to the books. I don't think they're abridged and uh, very pleasant, pleasant reading, uh, listening. But that is what I do. And I can't even tell you how many times I have listened to these stories over and over. That's how invested I have gotten with them. So I've seen the movies a bazillion times because they're always on. I think TNT always plays Mm -hmm. them, right? So I always watch them (laughs) when they're out and when they're on. But then I also listen to the books on Audible and... um, yeah, it's it's always it's always it's always a good time for Harry Potter. Always, guys. Always. So out of all the storylines, do you have a favorite storyline or or something that stood out to you or maybe even one that you've gotten to so far with your girls that seems to really have captured their attention? Well, my daughter who's a, with the one that's obsessed. Okay, so I you were talking about your oldest daughter acting like she's too cool. So I want to say this about my twins. They listen when I read and we talk about it. But the one was well, sometimes when I sit down to read at night, she's like, <laughs> oh, I just want to go to sleep. But then the sister that's obsessed with it winds up falling asleep while I'm reading. But the other one, I get ready to close the book and turn off the light and go out the door at night. And she's like, wait, what what just happened and what are we what are we going to read tomorrow and I'm like I thought you were going to sleep you know and it's like no she was actually she was really listening to it so I I have the same experience (laughs) so um I think both of them right now are kind of obsessed with Sirius Black Mm -hmm. um we just got done reading Prisoner of Azkaban which you know that's the big exciting storyline there is serious you think he's this bad guy until you get all the way to the end and you find out he really just got framed and is actually harry's godfather and all this kind of stuff and so um my daughter that's obsessed really really likes him um she also likes cedric diggory because we're in the middle of goblet of fire so we're talking about triwizard tournament um and i'm kind of having a new appreciation for him reading his storyline again because you know robert pattinson played him in the movie and he was relatively new I guess to the acting scene, to the movies or whatever. No, um, it's definitely most- pre pre Twilight. So pre Twilight, mm-hmm. right? Now, so now everybody knows him as Edward the Vampire from Twilight, and so I think people don't like they want to like laugh at his role as Cedric, but I'm like. I don't know. I really liked him in that role and I really liked that character. But let me tell you, I, like I was saying earlier, I'm obsessed with Fantastic Beast. I'm obsessed with Newt Scamander. Mm-hmm. I love that storyline. I love him. I think he's weird and quirky, but I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and I love learning. I just love learning what happened in the wizarding world because, you know, it existed before Harry Potter. Right, right, Jake right. I <laughs> just chose to tell his story first and now she's telling the story. And I also, what I one of the things I loved about the Crimes of Grindelwald movie was I loved seeing young Albus Dumbledore. I was always fascinated by yeah. him. And so learning his his beginnings before he became headmaster at Hogwarts has been fun for me. Yeah, that was that was a lot of fun. I I I'll, I have to admit, I did not love the movie. I didn't hate it. I didn't hate it. Like, mm-hmm. I didn't actually get around to watching it in theaters. So I ended up watching it when it was on demand. And I was like, okay, 
Let's sit down and see what they have to say. See what people were complaining about. While I got some of the complaints, I was still... The, okay, so as a reviewer, as a movie critic, I am looking to see if I am entertained, first mm-hmm. and foremost. I am not looking that it's absolutely perfect or that, you know, the costumes were, you know, off the off the, off the the hook. You know, I'm, I'm not looking for lighting. I'm not looking for directing even... I enjoy all of those aspects and I will pull them out if it's if it really stands out to me. But my bottom line is, was I entertained during those, you know, two hours of watching this movie? And if the answer is yes, then I consider it an okay movie. I feel like it did its job, right? Mm-hmm. The hard part is when you are talking about fandoms and their favorite movies. Mm-hmm. We want every single one to blow us away, right? Exactly. <laughs> we, we want them to be perfect. We want you to not want leave anything out. And we mm-hmm. want you to cover all the storylines. It's hard to please mm-hmm. fans, especially when you're talking to a fandom that is just so global like the Harry Potter fandom is. So I get why why there are critics out there who had issues with the movie. Bottom line, when it came down to it, I was intrigued. I can't wait for the next one because I need to see where this story goes. I am not done with these stories. I need more. But um, and I definitely love love seeing Alba, Albus uh, Dumbledore. That was he. We needed we needed right. that right after he was such a pivotal character in our beloved mm-hmm. Harry's life. We needed to see where he came from and in his story, especially since. At the end of those books, you know, there were there were some more details that came out about his younger life. And now we're actually getting to see how some of that played out. I'm all for it. I, I'm down for this. So um, super excited to see where we're going next. And I know you've seen this, but, you know, there's four um, yes. e-books that are coming out, mm-hmm. nonfiction. They're nonfiction shorts called Harry Potter, A Journey Through, adapted from... Anyway, they're, they're, mm-hmm. there's going to be four of them. And i um, so excited. I think the first one comes out June 27th. Charms and yes. Defense Against yes. the Dark Arts and Potion and Herbology yeah. are going to be released. So we've got some Harry Potter to, to come back into our lives. I'm excited. I know. I'm excited. I, I'm, like I said, I devoured Fantastic Beasts, Quidditch Through the Ages, um, A History of Magic, which I think these stories, these short stories are taking are taken from um, A History of Magic. They're excerpts from it. Um, but I'm going to read them again mm-hmm. because I just love them and I love anything that has to do with the wizarding world. And I think when you have that information and you read about, you know, cause Hermione is always referencing, well, if you had read a history of magic <laughs> and so now we can read a history of magic and right? get what Hermione is talking about. And I just think it adds another layer of authenticity and realism to this fantastical story because it, you know, there's nothing better than knowing like, okay, I guess for going back to the, what was your favorite storyline? Another favorite storyline of mine was Snape because for the longest time he was the bad guy. Harry mm-hmm. hated him. Everybody hated him. He was mean. And then at the end, you're just like, no, Snape just loved your mom so much and has always loved her. And it was just like this character arc always. Yes. And like the fact always. that I'm, I don't know if you heard, but when always. he, had, you know, rest in peace, Alan Rickman, we love you. Uh, JK Rowling told him at the very beginning when he started filming Sorcerer Stone, that she told him Snape's storyline. Cause I think when they started filming that she maybe hadn't written Deathly, Deathly Hallows yet. There was one, like they were starting and she was like, oh, I got to mm-hmm. finish, you know, cause by in a few years, they're going to get to Deathly Hallows and we got to finish the story. But she told him from day one, this is where your character is going to end up. And that, you know, directed and affected how he was going to portray Snape through the movies. And I think he did a fantastic job. And I love that there was this, thing that you know because i'm sure everybody that read and everybody that watched the movies was like oh snape he's the bad guy and then you get to the end and you're like oh he's not really the bad guy and that's like real life like you know you really think you know this particular leader of this country or this you know 
you know, some people feel this way about the president of Walt Disney or whatever. They're like, oh, this is a, he's a bad guy. He all he just wants is money. And then you find out later, like, oh, no, he's a human being. There's more to his story. And I love that she did that with her characters. Like each of them, there is more depth to each of them every time she releases new information. I agree. And, and she, that's the thing. If, if by some chance you have stumbled upon this and you've gotten this far in the <laughs> podcast and you are not already a Harry Potter fan, that's one of the things that she has done so well is all the details. She is, uh, you know, as uh, speaking from one Disney fangirl to another, we know that the details are in mm-hmm. the story. And that is one thing that the Harry Potter world, uh, everything is all about these details and about these little moments and these these things that she has built in. And I agree with you on Snape and Alan Rickman. Oh my gosh, that was, it was brilliant casting and beautifully, you know, done through all the movies and just, I just loved it. Just loved it. Now I know I'm going to get those books when they come out because of course I am. Um, <laughs> of course. But what I am also, what I am also trying to do is make my way back to Universal Orlando because I've yes. got to get on Hagrid's ride. I have got to, I have been so obsessed with for anyone, backtrack for a minute. If for anybody that has not been to Universal Orlando, I'm going to speak to that real quick. There are two, mm-hmm. well, there's actually three parks at Universal Orlando, but we're going to talk about the two kind of theme parks. There's also a, a third water park, but we're going to talk about the two theme parks. And in each, in each theme park, there is a separate section of the Harry Potter Wizarding World. So over at at Universal Studios. Mm-hmm. Over at Universal yes. Studios, you are going to get Diagon Alley, which is amazing. And then over at mm-hmm. Islands of Adventure, you're going to get Hogsmeade and Hogwarts Castle, which is amazing. The the, the coolest, the smartest thing that Universal has ever done was A, yes. they they t- they got those rights. They got JK on board and they they got those rights to be able to build this. But B, they put them at they they knew they wanted both, you know, sections of the park and they were smart enough to do it in two different parks connected by a train ride. Guys, you get to ride the Hogwarts Express between the two locations. Of course, you're going to pay for that ticket, but you do get to go if you have a park to park ticket, you get to go mm-hmm. between uh, by by you you never have to leave the Wizarding World of Harry Potter is what I'm telling you is you can completely once you've walked through Diagon Alley you can submerse yourself immerse yourself be put on those robes get out your wand make some magic happen ride all the rides eat all the food do all the things and then take your train ride and go to school and it's so cool it is. It is as much as I love my Disney and I love my Disney parks and caveat, I have obviously not been to Galaxy's Edge yet, so I can't speak to the immersion that happens there, but this is the most immersive feeling I've ever felt at a theme park and in in, in anywhere is being able to go to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter at the Universal Properties just blows me away and is so cool. And now they added this extra ride. Uh, they used to have an, another roller coaster there and they took that down. And there was a lot of people who were really upset about it because they wanted a, co- the, it was the biggest coaster in the Harry Potter section and, and they wanted to keep their coaster. But, and that was uh, called Dueling Dragons. I think what I've read about this and what I've seen in the videos, I think this Hagrid's ride, which is, they're calling it a story coaster, I think it's going to blow people away. It looks... I think it's going to be even better yeah. than the Dueling Don't Dragons. You? It's going to be better. Yes. It, it looks better. The characters that they have, you know, the creatures that they've added, the yes. storyline... It's, it's going to be better. So I think people just need to go ahead and like get over the fact that they took the dragon went away and move on because this is going to be so much better. And it looks long. It's going to be a long uh-huh. coaster. It is long. Um, in fact, I was reading something that um, that Universal put out and it just made me laugh. They said that this is going to be the longest roller coaster in Florida measuring up to 5,053 wow. feet. And it says, well, you know, this is a Hagrid themed ride, mm-hmm. remember? So of course yeah. it's going to be big because it's, you know, Hagrid, he's huge. I just love it. And I think what I'm most excited about this is that it's a roller coaster, sure, but they are immersing us on this roller coaster, which I... Uh, 
I love, I love it when, when parks do this kind of thing. I want the thrills. I want the fun, but I also love the story. And, um, for example, just to give you an idea of me, I am actually not a huge coaster person. I, did not ride screaming, screaming California Adventure over in California Adventure at, at Disneyland, DCA, because I was so scared of that as a roller coaster. I was scared to get on it, so I didn't do it. Y'all, as soon as they themed that sucker, <laughs> Incredibles, and they told me there was a story, and the whole time we're chasing Jack Jack, I'm like, oh, I could ride that. I want to ride that. I'm not <laughs> I have kidding. to see what happens I, to Jack Jack. Are we going to catch him? <laughs> I have to find out. Yes, I, I have to get into the story. So theme anything with a story and I'm mm-hmm. into it. And so this has this Hagrid's ride has me so excited because that's what they have done. They're making this this story coaster. We're going to go through um, Hagrid's hut, uh, but beyond Hagrid's hut, uh, we are going to go to the Forbidden Forest, which since, you know, the moment that the kids get off and they are sorted into their houses, I think one of the first things Dumbledore tells them in book one and in in the first movie is mm-hmm. the for- Forbidden yep. Forest is off limits for all you first years. Keep that in mind. So ever since then, I'm like, oh, is it really now? Don't you think we should go? And- <laughs> I'm that because now I'm going to see how close I can get to the edge of the Forbidden Forest. <laughs> and now we're going to yeah. get to ride through the Forbidden Forest, which is uh, just dorking me out big time. So yeah, I am all about this. And I wish Universal so much success with this new ride and the a beautiful addition to what they've already done, which is create one of the most immersive worlds and have mm-hmm. taken our book and then our movie. And now we can physically go into it ourselves. Oh, so excited. So excited. What is your favorite? You just, you actually just had a re- pretty recent trip to Universal. Yes. What? In November, we went over Thanksgiving. Yeah. What was your favorite? Give me your favorite snack. Or, or you know what? Let's start with tips. Tell me okay. what is your favorite tip to, for somebody that maybe is a little known fact or an Easter egg or something they can look for when they are at the Wizarding World? I think one of the biggest things that you need to do, well, first of all, I'm going to say if you are a fan, even if you're not a fan, but you've dipped your toes into it, you've got to buy a park to park pass. Because if you don't, yes. you won't be able to ride the Hogwarts Express. You could get two one day tickets to each park and go to Diagon Alley one day in Universal Studios and then go to Hogsmeade and Islands of Adventure. But if you don't get that park to park pass, you cannot ride the Hogwarts Express. And I cannot stress that enough because so many people will go, I didn't get to ride the train. And I'm like, I told you to get your and your uh, park to park ticket. You got to get it or an annual pass or, or something. You have to be able to do that to travel in that way. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. That yeah. is the number one tip <laughs> that, that we give to anybody yes. that we are talking about Universal with is please I know it kind of hurts your your pocketbook a little bit, but the memory that you yes. will get out of that is so worth it. So yes, good tip, good tip. Okay, go on, continue, continue. Yeah. Okay. So, and then my other big my other big tip about Diagon Alley is it is a lot. It feels at least from the outside and then going in, it feels a lot bigger than Hogsmeade. And what I mean by that is because it starts outside of actual Diagon Alley. You come upon this like London set right after you pass, I believe it is the Fast and the Furious ride, Mm -hmm. I think, Mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. And you all of a sudden you're like, oh, wait, we were just in Miami for the Fast and the Furious. And now here we are in London. And there is a phone booth outside. There is the triple decker night bus outside. Um, You can see the outside of King's Cross Station where the Hogwarts Express is. Um, And there's lots of little, oh, and there's um, number 12 Grimmauld Place. Yeah, yeah, Where the Black family (laughs) lived and the Order of the Phoenix took up residence. So like, don't miss those little Easter eggs. If you go into the phone booth and dial... um, it's not 411, but it's something like that. There's a special number that you can dial. And I'm sure somebody listening to this podcast can correct me. <laughs> but um, there's a special number you can dial and it will give you instructions for how to like get yourself to the Ministry of Magic. Um, yeah, you actually, you dial magic. Oh, you dial magic. Uh, okay, M-A-G. that's what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But it's really, and people don't know, you know, people are just taking pictures in front of it because they're like, oh, it's a London phone, phone booth or whatever. But you can actually listen to some recordings about how to get to the Ministry of Magic. And I think that's really, really fun. And also Creature, who is the house elf for the Black family in Grimmel mm-hmm. Place, he appears in the window, but you have to be patient because it's not... 
you know, it's not like one of those things where you can say, oh, every 15 minutes he'll appear. It's very random because I stood out there for a while and tried to time it. And like one time it was like seven minutes and then another time it was 12 minutes. And so it's just kind of random that he'll peek through the window. But that's really kind of fun. And if especially if you're a fan, if really I can't stress enough, if you're a fan, even, you know, from the beginning and you don't really know a ton about it, like you will really appreciate the fact that Universal Orlando took time to add all these extra little details outside of the land. Now, when you get in Diagon Alley, it is just like it looks in the movie, which is amazing. But if you go, like we did at Thanksgiving Mm -hmm. uh, during a holiday, it is very crowded because the streets are really narrow. So you do feel like you are in, you know, in the middle of the scene when Harry's trying to get all his school supplies and there, everybody's bumping into everybody and (laughs) all that kind of stuff. So, you know, just be conscious of the fact that both And Hogsmeade's a little more spread out, but Hogsmeade and Diagon Alley can both get pretty crowded during a holiday. So my other tip, other than making sure you like really look for those details, is to maybe try to plan your trip on a off time if you can and not during a holiday or like a three-day weekend when locals will be there because it's it can get, you know, there's not a lot of space for people to spread out in those two areas. Yeah, and you definitely want the space and you want you want to take some time looking at things. Look, I am all about the rides. I am such a big ride person. I don't want to waste time watching shows. I will admit that. However, I come full stop when I walk in mm-hmm. to Diagon Alley, when I walk into Hogsmeade and start looking at every little thing because nothing is there by mistake and nothing there is not themed. I mean, I just giggled my head off the first time I went into the girls' bathroom uh-huh. in Hogsmeade because Moaning Myrtle's in there, yes. y'all. You hear Moaning Myrtle, and it's amazing. Anyway, I just there's just so many little things that they really, you know, took great care with, and they they just knocked this, this section out of the park. Um, I agree with all those all those tips. I will also say. We had fun talking um, in front of the night bus with Mm -hmm. the conductor who completely stays in character the whole time. He's really great. But the uh, the head, yes. the Dre head, he'll actually even talk back to you too, and so you can have this conversation. And it's hilarious, and they are they're just fantastic there. So I, I I I can't recommend enough. Like take your time if you are going. You know, maybe even. Maybe even plan a solid three days worth of your trip when you're going to Universal Orlando so that you can spend one whole day Mm -hmm. where all you do is all the Harry Potter stuff. You don't even worry about riding any other rides. You just go and go through everything that you can in both sections, ride the train back and forth. You know, just really (laughs) soak it all in because I promise you, you will continue to see more and more details every time, every time you go. And then the next two days you can spend exploring the other parts of the park because there's there's tons to do at at Universal uh, Orlando uh, theme parks. But uh, I would actually, you know, probably recommend that as a a good three day trip. Well, and and if you are a Harry Potter devotee, like if you're just casual fan and you just want to ride the rides, then I don't think you necessarily need the whole three days. But, but trust me, once you've been in this section and you look around and you go, wow, this is kind of amazing. Um, I'm, I, you're going to walk out with robes. That's, I'm just warning you. You're gonna walk out with robes yes. and chocolate, and chocolate frogs. frogs because and, and, <laughs> and butterbeer. Butter I see it's all all the all good things, all good things. <laughs> all right, well, Sarah, thank you so much for coming on here and fangirling with Harry Potter. Yay! I'm this glad was so to. much fun, and I really hope that we can come back and talk about some more of this as the next books come out, as we get more movies. I think we have like almost two years to wait before that happens, but that's okay. Yeah. I I know yep. where to find. Thank you. Okay. I know where to find you. <laughs> okay. And I know that your love of Harry Potter is going nowhere. So, um, <laughs> but mm-hmm. thanks again for coming. And everybody, thanks for fangirling with us today and come back and do it again real soon. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you, Patty, for having me. I appreciate it.